and welcome to the Dog Savant Podcast. My name is Brett Endes. I am a professional dog trainer, and the purpose of this podcast is to share my dog training experience with you if you are a dog owner, someone whose dog needs training, if you are a client who would like to supplement the work we're doing in the real world, and if you'd like to learn more about the life of a professional dog trainer, this podcast is for you. Uh, And as always, don't forget to rate, review, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever it may be. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, dog training related questions, please contact me, info at thedogsavant.com. It really helps me, it helps other people find this where I can help them. Uh, Nowadays we're going through the COVID-19 issue uh, and more people need good dog training because good dog trainers can't get to them. Uh, I also am going to be starting an online dog training program soon, and I also am doing virtual online training as we speak, one-on-one consultations and training sessions with you via FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, telephone. Uh, So if you need me, please, now's a good time of giving discounted sessions that I'm very available because I cannot see clients in the real world or conduct group classes. Okay, so um, everybody, you know, we're, we're stuck at home. That's why I'm putting out more content. I have the actual time and the mental energy to talk more than I already do in a day and uh, I wanted to just share more I want to share uh, some dog training advice I want to share my life share what we've been doing share things we've been evolving into Um, but I know a lot of you and I know me personally as a person but even with our dogs it's hard to get out there and get groomed Uh, groomers I don't really think they're an essential business and if they do maybe they come to you via mobile services are open but it's not just something you could readily do so I want to give you some tips on at least how to give your dog a bath maybe some just rudimentary grooming ideas just to keep your dog sanitary clean and able to see right so um, let's say your dog you know a lot of people say well the dog is good when they go to the groomers or the groomer deals with it but I don't ever really do that well you might be having to do that now So you want to really start, even if you're planning on grooming your dog, let's say this week or next week, you want to start maybe, you know, if you're going to, let's say they're a large dog, you're going to have to use the tub of the shower or a space outdoors if you have warm weather. Or if you have a small dog, they're going to do the sink like I do. You see my videos, I do a little mini, the Yorkie. Um, You want to be able to acclimate them to it if they're not just going to jump right in. And quite frankly, most dogs, unless they've been conditioned as a puppy, need a little bit of encouragement to get in the tub. Even Bowie, who doesn't mind it once we're in it, I lure him with a little bit of, I I use a little bit of prosciutto today just to get him in and to turn his body. He's a big boy in a small tub and uh, it takes some influence and I don't want to physically, you know, control him. I'd rather just steer him and get him to do his own thing. Anyway, so if you want to get a dog used to being in the environment where the baths are going to happen to create more of a positive or more of a lure to the experience you want to have them whether it be have them sit in the tub do place training like I always talk about in the tub or near the tub have them eat in the bathroom next to the tub Uh, all these things just start acclimating them running the water getting them used to it now let's say your dog's used to it and you just you know want to do it get them right in there. Uh, the water, you know, you want to make sure, and these are all, a lot of these things you're going to hear from me guys are just pretty commonplace things. I just figured I'd share it on my platform here. Uh, the water shouldn't be too hot or too cold. It should be comfortable on your wrist and not scald you or be so freezing you can't tolerate it. Uh, you want to use a shampoo that's natural ingredients, nothing with alcohol or artificial ingredients, colors, chemicals, not good for a dog or their skin. Um, I use Earth Bath Naturals. I just like the way it smells and it's just clean stuff. So I like it. There's a lot of varieties of flavors or scents that you can get for them. Um, when you're doing a dog, I like to wash them. and be a little more specific. You want to wash them down first, get, get them nice and you know cleaned out, get the initial hair and dander off. Then you want to scrub them, let that soak a little bit. I'm not a groomer, guys, so don't don't give me you know crap just for not doing this. Like, well, that's not how you're supposed to do it professionally. I'm not a professional groomer. I'm just trying to give you some tips on how to do this uh, while you're on your own and you probably in the future will never have to do it again. But for now, I'll give you some pointers. So get the dog sudsed up, watch their eyes. I usually like to do the head areas last because once you start messing around with their face, their ears, top of their head, they start getting annoyed. And if a dog doesn't love the bath, that's when you start losing their attention or ability to stand still or tolerate it. So um, go to those parts last. Some dogs are sensitive. Whatever your dog specific is, their feet. Just try to go towards that area last when you're getting into the whole scrubbing 
and then rinsing them off. Uh, some people like to do a second rinse with a dirty dog. They like to scrub them down a second time with the soap. And even some people like to use a conditioner, which I'll do with Bowie once in a while. Uh, he was pretty dirty, so we did a double today. Uh, but you know, it depends on your dog, your preference and the time you have to do it. But uh, clean dogs, whoa, dear, hey, all right. Guys, I do this in the, <laughs> I, I do, I do this podcast in the car and sometimes wildlife jumps. I think a couple episodes ago, we had a fox run by in the middle of it. Um, all right, let's hold this together. <laughs> so Bowie, um, you know, he, he got a double today. Where are we at? Okay, so basically, uh, get your dog clean, rinse him off. Then you want to draw. Oh, and one other tip. And I learned this when I was a vet assistant when I was 19 years old. And I used to wash all the dogs that had to go home or after surgery. Is that when they're about to shake and you don't want to get yourself with the wall soaked, just cup your hand and give a little pressure on one of their ears. And if you can catch them and you see their head starting to shake before their whole body's going to go down to the tail and get everyone soaked, um, you can sometimes divert that. Uh, towel dry them. If you have a blower, uh, that's good. Don't use a hair dryer. Um, I don't recommend it. it, it it's too heat, much heat. It's not meant for dog sensitive skin or the kind of hair they have. Um, use a designated one or just air dry your dog. I have to really use just a couple old scrap towels and just throw them in the wash when I'm done. Wipe down the room. Uh, we're going to build a designated tub, but for now I just use the shower head attachment and I just do it. And Minnie, like I said, I do in the sink. Uh, and the two big dogs get the top. Um, let's see, anything special? Uh, a little bit of grooming. I'm not, again, a groomer. Please, I have to always give those little asterisks. Um, the eyes, Minnie gets shaggy sometimes, and really, as long as she has the eyes and the brushing, make sure if it's a long-coated dog, they don't get knots. You get down there, get that undercoat out. That's a lot of times what we miss. We just brush half of their coat, and then we end up getting a lot of that, you know, and it gets clumped up, and that's with the knots, and it gets matted, and it's much harder to get out down the road. Um, I even like to either blow out a dog with a professional blower to get the dander and the dead fur out or brush them out and get all that fur out with the long coated dogs before the bath. It makes it a little less mess and it also just gets gets a penetration of your soap and suds and cleaning. Uh, then even after they're dry, you can give them another one you know, when, they, when they're done just to clean them up. Um, their butt private areas, if you have a shaggy dog, that might have to be trimmed down or shaved. Uh, depending on your dog and how they do. Minnie's actually pretty good in that area, uh, fortunately. She's just with the eyes, I gotta trim because she looks like the Beatles if I don't get on it. Uh, we leave her shaggy, but I do like to keep her clean and groomed and brushed and comfortable and all that. All right, so, um, you know, it's all about putting stuff out there for you. It was just an idea on the fly. I was on my way to pick up Kate from work and uh, I want to um, just, you know, share something that might be useful, not just talk about my life as we do sometimes because I got a lot of my life going on right now um, not as much dog training as much as oh living living a homestead life and trying to get stuff out there to you if you enjoy this please let me know it really motivates me I try to keep it short and sweet so I don't take up much of your time but if you want me to talk longer I'll try um, I have pending guests that I'd like to put on and I am, oh, one other, one other thing. I guess I'll update you since I told you I'm not gonna talk about myself, I'll do that. Um, I am setting up a little studio for more video I'm gonna try to put out in my office. I've got some cool little things I'm hanging up on the wall like they all do, your little you know, background kitsch and credentials and memorabilia. So I'm gonna have that going. And um, I'm also doing some training in the Colorado area. So if you're in this area and you'd like board and train, uh, virtual training, I could do with anyone anywhere worldwide. If you're English speaking or a little bit of broken Spanish or I can do hand gestures, whatever it takes. Um, it would be helpful to you and it'd be helpful to me. All right, guys, thanks again. Have a good day. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll get through this. Bye, everyone.